In my opinion, nothing teaches us character better than generosity. No class, no teacher, no book teaches, generos teaches character better than generosity. And the best time to start is when the amounts are small. And I know if kids learn these lessons well, they'll give a dime out of a dollar, help people that can't help themselves, support worthy projects. Or if you belong to a church, they teach tithe, peace of. That's very important. Now, because when the amounts get larger, sometimes it's a little more difficult. You know, giving 100,000 out of a million, someone says, oh, if I had a million, I'd give 100,000. I'm not sure, that's a lot of money. So the time to start is when the amounts are small, 10 cents out of the dollar. Okay, next 10 cents, I call active capital. Active capital means do something to make a profit. Active capital. Set aside a portion of your income. Wages are okay, but I'm telling you, wages will make you a living. Profits will make you a fortune. So set aside part of your income as capital called active capital. Any kind of project you can possibly think of, you can possibly come up with. I'm going to write a new book, I think, for kids. I think the title is going to be, of course, Kids Should Pay Taxes. It's kind of an interesting title. In California, kids do pay taxes. When a child walks into 7-Eleven, buys something that costs a dollar, the proprietor says, give me seven more pennies. And the child says, hey, what's these seven pennies for? And the proprietor says, that's the taxes. Kid says, well, hey, I'm only eight years old. Proprietor says, congratulations, you're my youngest taxpayer. Give me the money. So in California, where I live, kids do pay taxes. Big question is, should they? And my book will answer that question. Of course, kids should pay taxes. Nothing is for free. If you want to ride your bicycle on the sidewalk instead of in the mud, you got to pay the seven pennies. Nothing is free, so we all have to pay. So, 10 cents out of your living, out of the money you earn, set aside for capital. Capital to try your best to show a profit. And in my book, it's going to be all kinds of ways kids can make money, right? Two bicycles, one to ride and one to rent. I mean, you know, it doesn't take long to figure out some enterprise that'll start making a profit. Then you must jot this down if you're taking notes, profits are better than wages. One, you can't usually start wages until you're about 16, 15, 16, but you can make a profit long before you're eligible to start earning wages. And then there's no limit to profits and they can, they can double and triple and quadruple. You know, there's no limit. It's incredible how fast profits can grow. So profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living, profits make you a fortune. Now, the third 10 cents is vitally important. I call it passive capital. Capital you let somebody else use. A financial institution, stocks and bonds, mutual funds, whatever. Let someone else use it, you furnish the money, they use it to make a profit, but they pay you for the use of it called interest. And here's one of the things that'll make you financially independent fairly quickly, and that's called compound interest. And this is how you get it. Letting someone else use a portion of your money, your substance. They show the profit, they pay you interest. And this passive capital, I'm telling you, over a sustained period of time, if you'll develop this little 10, 10, 10, and 70, especially starting at age 15, I'm telling you, by the time you're 35, you will be financially independent. You'll have the ability to live from the income of your own resources. And then one more point on passive capital. There's a Bible philosophy. I'm an amateur on the Bible. But there's a Bible philosophy that teaches the borrower is servant to the lender. And if you want to be in a powerful position as you grow older, Finally, when you become mature, maybe have your own business, things have worked out for you for the future. The position you always want to be in is the power position, and that's called the lender. The lender is the power position. So if kids learn early enough, and then you ask them what they'd like to be when they grow up, I'm telling you, once they understand, they'll say, well, one of the things I want to be is one of those lenders. That's the power position, not the spender. No, you'll be pitied the rest of your life if you just become a spender got to become a lender and I think this is the one formulas to follow 10 cents out of every dollar let someone else use it be the lender power position then try to show a profit can't we teach our children how to take a dollar search the neighborhood 
find a broken wagon, pay a dollar for it, bring it home, you know, clean it up, sand it until it's clean, paint it red till it shines, straighten out the wheels till they're true, take it back to the neighborhood, sell it for five dollars. Anybody can do that. Now, does the child deserve four dollars profit? And the answer is yes. Society now has a mended wagon. That's what America's all about. Finding something, touching it, making it better, making a profit, taking part of your resources, helping people who can't help themselves, let someone else use it to make a profit. Some projects require more capital than one person has. Exciting. And then let them pay you for the use of it. America's had this philosophy now all these years. Communism has taught all these years capital belongs in the hands of the state, not in the hands of the people. We've been teaching all these years capital belongs in the hands of the people, not in the hands of the state. And we turned out to be right. Capital in the hands of the kids, capital in the hands of the people. Enterprises that make a profit, enterprises that grow, it's the hope of our future. So that little simple formula I hope will help you. Now, one more key on financial independence, and that is attitude. Attitude. Here's number one. I used to say, I hate to pay my bills. My teacher straightened me out on that. He said, let's see, Mr. Owen, what you hate to do is pay $100 on an account and reduce your liabilities and increase your assets. I said, well, no, not if you look at it that way. He said, well, it all depends on how you look at it. So wouldn't you love to pay your bills, reduce your liabilities, increase your assets? You've got to have that kind of attitude. I found out the same attitude about taxes. I used to say, I hate to pay my taxes. And Mr. Shove said, well, that's one way to live. But don't you understand? Taxes is how we care and feed the goose that lays the golden eggs. Wouldn't you want to do your share? Someone says, yes, but the goose eats too much. Probably true. But hey, we all eat too much. We all need to go on a diet. Better a fat goose than no goose. So I finally became a happy taxpayer. Now, I think taxes are too high, so I'm working to get taxes lowered for our economic future. But then whatever they turn out to be, I gladly pay and do my part, because that's what makes the whole system run, each of us doing our part. Now, I want these three subjects to be valuable for you. I want them to have meaning for you. Uh, I want you someday to be financially independent. Uh, I want you to have the personal development so that you feel good about yourself. If I had a chance to meet you someday, I'd like to have you show me the list of goals that you've got started and say, Mr. Drone, here's some I've already checked off. Uh, here's the books I'm reading. Uh, here's what's happened. I'm developing the skills. I'm better this year than I was last year. I've got more self-confidence. My skills are developing. Uh, that's what I want for you. And that's why I took the time to come and share in this video message with you. I do seminars all around the world, but this is one way that I can reach out and touch you in case you can't come to my seminars wherever I am. Maybe this video will reach you somewhere and it'll have an impact on your life. And what I'd like to do is later hear about it, a letter, phone call, or to have a chance to meet you in person. And now I'd like to leave you with these four questions called questions to ponder. These questions were valuable for me and I want to make them valuable for you. Here's the first one, why? We all ask why we should work this hard. Why take that many classes? Why go to school that many years? You know, why take the notes? Why read the books? Why work that hard? Why put yourself through the push-ups and the disciplines? Why? Good question, why? Best answer to why, I think, is the second question. Why not? Why not see how many books you can read, how many classes you can take, how many skills you can develop? Why not see how valuable you can become to the marketplace and to your friends and to your family? Why not see what you can make of yourself? Why not see how far you can go, how much you can see, how much you can earn, how much you can share? Why not? That's the heritage all of us have in America, especially is to see what we can make out of our lives now that we've been given this extraordinary opportunity. Now, my third question I'd love to ask you in person. But since I can't do it in person, I want to ask it of all of you. But I want you to take it personally. And my third question is, why not you? Why not you with good self-esteem? Why not you starting to change and setting goals? Why not you starting to make progress toward financial independence? Uh, if I can do it, you can do it. 
I wished I had a lot more testimonials here today besides mine. A whole steady stream that would come by and tell you their story. Someone who started with nothing, finally run a big enterprise. A mother who was on welfare, now she owns her own business. In addition to my story, I wish I had a lot more. And if all of them told their story, guess how they would probably wind up their story? They'd probably say, just like me, why not you? If we can read, you can read. If we can change, you can change. If we can figure it out, you can figure it out. If we can turn it around, you can turn it around. There isn't anything you can't accomplish. That's what those testimonials would say. And so I want to say it to you personally. Why not you? You've got the brains. You've got the, the stamina. You've got the vitality. You've got the interest. You've got your life ahead of you. You've got the future. You can do it. If anybody can do it, you can do it. If one of us can do it, hey, we all can do it. And now here's my last question. Why not now? This is a good time as the 20th century starts to wind down a few more years as we get ready for century 21. What a good time to set your goals, work on yourself, work on your skills. What a good time to get it together. What a good time to start this process. Personal development, growing, changing, developing, having a good plan for your money and for your life and for your future. Why not now? And I hope I have a chance to see you one of these days and share with you the experience, the reaction, the response you might have had from my message today. And until I get a chance to see you on this side of the world or the other side of the world, in some school or some seminar, or maybe I'll come and speak for a company that you work for someday, I hope I get a chance to meet you. Until then, I wish you the best. I want all that I've gotten to be yours and much, much more. God bless. Goodbye.